Hello there, my name is Wayne Robson. Um, Dave Cogle asked me um, yesterday, quick phone call, um, to knock out a, a video on uh, the interactive lighting mode, which we found in the lights, image based lighting. Right? I always call it the HDR node um, because you basically you can use uh, TIFFs, HDRIs, um, you can use open EXRs, you can only use one per scene. Uh, it's no different than any other uh, image based lighting, whether it's in MIR. 3D Max when using HDRI, you can only use one because you don't need more than one. Um, now I've got uh, the spike here, he's a 17.3 uh, million uh, model. So, second version I did in uh, an earlier version of this uh, particular sculpt a long time ago in another package. I said to, uh, because I didn't like the way it turned out, to redo it um, from scratch with a new base mask and stuff. So, uh, there you go. Right, let's just hop straight in. Now, at the moment, we've got default lighting, which is you know, you can slide up and down. Now one thing that you may not know is you can actually overclock it. All right? I'll show you something else which may come to bite me in the backside in a minute, but you can actually underclock it. So if you want to go less than one, you can do. This works for all the sliders. Um, the whole lot right across the uh, mud box. In fact, I've yet to find a slider that I can't overclock. So at the moment, let's just turn that onto zero. And we'll create a new image based lighting node. So there we have, All right. it's being lit by the three point lighting that you can find in there. All right, there it is there. You can see there's open EXRs, TIFFs, and in another folder I've got a load of HDRIs of mine. You can rotate it by holding down the L key and just moving around. There's another type of rotation uh, that's harder to describe than it is to try out, but most people I think will be using mouse button one and not the right mouse button. You can, of course, change these over. So let's um, open a uh, studio lighting one of mine. And then I can just uh, get a different effect. Okay. Now you can combine both lighting types. So if I added that into there with maybe, let's say we want a blue light. Okay, something like that. Okay. So because I have light zero one, the directional light selected, I can add that with the shadows as well, which it will now switch on. And then I can add shadows in um, with our interactive lighting. You can see there it is. In fact, if I turn down this lighting here, you might just have it somewhere like that. And then we just you can see the shadows there. I'm hoping it's going to turn out well on the encoding. Um, you see there, down by the legs. You see. Okay. So let's turn that back up just a wee bit like that. Now what I have done is under preferences, uh, under your colours, you'll see that my flat viewport colour I've turned to black um, because. Personally, I think if you're going to do a screenshot, uh, that looks a bit better. Um, I also turn off the grid because you don't really want a big yellow line going through his crotch. Okay. Um, viewport filters. Now, the yeah, ambient occlusion um, is supported by a certain range of cards because it uses a certain set of instructions and stuff. Um, and when you click that on, the first thing I would do uh, is bear in mind that it won't work on the default blend, you know, the um, which is. If we right click there, new material, simple blend. It wouldn't work on that one um, because it is simple, it's meant as a quick viewport solution. Now it's on good there, which we'll use until we get the settings correctly. So, what I normally do is turn it up and then just get it so it's capturing the smaller areas, then turn it down to something like, well, sort of like that. Switch over to best, and there you go. Another good rotation speed. I'm getting, well, you know, up to 100 and odd frames a second on that. That's easily usable. Depth of field. Now, if you really want to, you can just zoom in and out to find the hot spot. But if you really, really must have it at one particular point, you can fade it in like that. And say we want it uh, very tight, something like that, or we have it wider. The blur factor which is not, not the version of the X Factor. Um, just basically show you, it, it adds a halo actually, the higher you go up. 
And these are little tricks I came up with uh, where you can uh, overclock some of these sliders and get some wonderful halo effects. Tone mapper. Um, it speaks for itself, really. Um, just remember, <laughs> for the most part, you can turn that one down to make it darker and that one down to make it lighter. Okay. Now, the one thing I would say is when you have it set, before you start going rotating the model, turn adaption time down. Otherwise, the moment you rotate it, it will start fading to black because it's going to try and adapt um, the tone mapper to your geometry, how it's aligned in the scene with the lights, etc. etc. Um, you've also got your glare for if you want those sort of next gen game type effects. Uh, I'm not personally a big lover of those. Um, so I should say as well, you can you, you can change the colours of those lights and the way they behave. Um, it also affects the material. Now you see there I've got the studio lighting on here. Um, you can mix and match your materials. So let's just edit the material. I should bring up, I can't remember if I mentioned this before or not. The reason it brings up another box is so if you hit the T key, like that, it'll bring up the material box in its own little window like that. Um, that's why it gives you two in the smaller window because a lot of guys are working like this. Okay, now there's our studio lighting one there. Uh, I can take the reflection strength up a bit. This isn't exactly the best model to try it on. Uh, it's much better on uh, one of the hard surface ones, to be honest. Um, and once you've got that there, you can turn it up. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's try something a bit more fun. We'll try uh, the Torino Palace Sunset one because that's a nice orangey colour. And it'll go, there you go, just a second. And I've clicked the wrong one. So it's been one of those days. And there you go. Why is it not working? Man? Okay, try for the fourth time. Okay, you can see we have there um, our light is now um, got a nice orangey colour. So if I turn the reflections on this down to zero, instantly you can have negative refractions if you so wish. I'm putting a minus number in. I'll refresh the screen. So again, you've got the same ability we had before. You match it your background plate and stick all your viewport filters back on. Like that. And there you go, it's a very quick um, sort of guide, I wouldn't really call it a tutorial, um, on using the image based lighting node. Um, as I say, it uses TIFFs, HDR files, make sure, um, along with the Open EXR, that are in a lat long format and not probe format. Um, you can actually create your own in 3D Max, which is how I did one of the studio lighting ones, um, which is a lot, a lot easier, it gives you a lot more control. Um, you can make the lighting to match the scene absolutely perfectly. So there you go. Hope you've liked that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.